All right, so what's going on, y'all? Let's go ahead and do three, nine. Again, we gotta determine the, the displacements of the nodes, the local forces in each element, and the reactions using the direct stiffness method. So let's go. All right, again, right, using Hooke's equation uh, or Hooke's law, whatever, this is the ultimate goal, right? It's just a force is equal to a stiffness matrix. In this case, it's EA over L times X, right? Just like a spring, this is also a stiffness right here. This has values. In this case, it's gonna be Newton per meter. This is meter and this is gonna be Newtons. So um, this problem, um, it's straightforward. It's nothing crazy like we've ever done, right? But there is one thing that I wanted to mention um, that I discovered while doing it. And uh, you'll see in this problem that rounding uh, displacement values, uh, it's gonna help you in the long run. Um, I know it's a headache, right? Writing, let's say U2 is equal to some five uh, digit after the decimal number. Um, you always want to round it up, but the thing is, if you do that, it is going to mess you up, and we're going to go ahead and, it's not going to mess you up, but it's not going to help you see it clearly. You're still going to be right, and, but let me show you what I mean. Um, so in this case, right, three nodes, so let's just continue. I'll show you what I mean once we get there. So I got three nodes, so we're going to have three reaction forces, right? That's going to equal to some stiffness. The stiffness matrix is EA over L. The reason I can factor it out from the big matrix is because E is the same for both bars. We have two bars, right? One and two. They're both the same length. So L is the same. They both have the same cross-sectional area and they both have the same modulus of elasticity. So I could go ahead and factor it out. And let's go ahead and assemble this matrix. Um, Let's go ahead and go down right here. All right, so just as a spring, right, um, you have your element, in this case it's a bar. So instead of K, negative K, negative KK, you're gonna have EA over L, negative EA over L, negative EA over L, and EA over L. Um, in this case, it's between nodes one and two for the first element. So it's between nodes one, two, one, two. So it's this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot. But since we already factored out the EA over L, it's just gonna be one, negative one, negative one, and one, okay? So let's go ahead and do the second one now. It's between nodes two and three. Um, so now we just add one to here, so this becomes a two. Uh, negative one, negative one, and one, because nodes two and three, right? So these four spots. So that's the stiffness matrix. Um, this problem is a little easier in that sense when you only have three nodes. Um, displacement, okay? So it's U1, U2, and U3. So let's go ahead and start applying the boundary conditions. I'm gonna go ahead and erase again, right? So U1's not gonna move no matter how much force is applied at the other nodes. So this right here is gonna be zero. Okay, U3, it's a positive. 25 millimeters now they kind of give us some everything in just a standard in uh, standard engineering values right like uh this is probably the i think this must be steel i'm guessing i can't remember it's been a while but um this is a pascal's technically newton per meter squared okay so gigas is just 10 to the 9 they give us meters here so we got to convert that that's going to be 0 0.025 okay so we have two displacement values. Um, they give us the force at node two. That is negative 5,000. Again, it's going in the negative direction. Positive is this way. So this is negative 5,000, okay? And that's about it, right? So again, you know you're doing something right if at every node you either know one of them, force or displacement. So at node one, we know displacement, but we don't know force. Same for node three, right? We know displacement and we don't know force. And at node two, we know force, but we don't know displacement. So, and then uh, before I start assembling the equations, just wanted to point out that EA over L is equal to 210 times 10 to the nine, right? 
this one right here uh, times 4 now the area times 4 times 10 to the negative 4 okay all over 2 so if you do the math you'll get 420 YOLO times 10 to the fifth okay so we can go ahead and start doing the equations this is um, that's why you plug this number this one goes right here so the first equation is gonna be f1x is equal to 420 times 10 to the fifth don't forget it um, then you start your parentheses so it's 1 times 0 that's 0 negative 1 times u2 that's negative u2 plus 0 times 0 0.025 that's it next one is negative 5000 so you focus on the second row now negative 1 times 0 2 times u2 oh so you f don't forget it it's gonna mess you up it's not the first time I forgot it you've seen the other videos <laughs> uh, 2 u2 minus 0 0.025 finally f3x is equal to again 420 times 10 to the fifth uh, negative u2 right negative 1 times u2 then plus 0 0.025 that's what I like about three um three nodes it's very easy to solve for the unknowns in this case the trick is if you've seen the other videos I mentioned it a lot um, you stay away from the equations that where you don't know force so in this case equations one and three in this one you have one equation one unknown so you can go ahead and solve it so using equation two do the math you'll get negative 1.19 times 10 to the negative 4 is equal I just divided by 420 times 10 to the fifth divided by well 5,000 divided by this is equal to 2u2 minus 0 0.025 that means 2u2 is equal to uh, ba -ba. I th yeah 2.488 times 10 to the negative 2 finally u2 is equal to 0 0.0124 meters now this is u2 we're right so look before we keep going let's kind of make sense of the situation we have 5,000 going to the left here right so it's pushing this way we have a force here and that moves it uh, 25 millimeters okay so just by looking at it 25 divided by 2 it's pretty much this right 0 1 2 5 that means this force is so damn big that this 5,000 newtons it's so small does that make sense it's very small compared to this force considering u2 uh, moved half of this distance this Delta um, so just keep that in mind so we're gonna get big numbers but they make sense okay um, as long as, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the U2 is going to make sense as long as you get a huge number for F3. There we go. That makes more sense. So let's go ahead and continue. Now that we found U2, we could go ahead and find F1X and F3X, right? Just plug in. So equation 1 and 3, uh, F1X is going to be equal to negative 520 comma 800 newtons going to the left and then we got f3x is equal to 529 200 newtons going to the to the right if i said left here i'm sorry i meant to the right <laughs> okay so now let's see if these answers make sense so if you haven't been watching the other videos, we know the answers make sense is when you do the sum of the forces and the x direction is equal to zero. But that's kind of the thing. Uh, because we rounded all these numbers, you're not gonna get equal to zero and you might think that you're way off because they don't. Now let's go ahead and uh, do the sum of the forces. So we have 529,000 going this way. We have 5,000 going this way. And then we have this way, right? To the right but it's negative so it switches goes to the left that number here is 520 
Well, you're probably saying, oh shit, that doesn't make sense, right? The sum of 520 and five, that's 525,000. This is 529, we're off by 4,000. But that's kind of the thing about rounding. Um, I did the math and if you round, your U2 will be 0 0.01244. And if you use that U2 and you plug in here, you're gonna get these numbers. F1X would be 522,480. And this number would be 527,520. Uh, same signs, right? Negative, positive. But what I'm trying to say is now, now if you look at the difference, 527 minus 522, that is 5,000. So the reason I mentioned this is when you take your exam, don't panic if the answers don't make sense. As long as you're following the process, um, if you've been watching my videos, right? If you're following my process, you're gonna be all right. Um, and if you and if your uh, professor tries to come at you saying you got it wrong, just be like, no, no, no. It's just uh, the rounding. Look, if we use more exact values, blah blah blah. Or I mean, to avoid all this, just use more exact values. If uh, that's gonna make things easier. But I just wanted to, I wanted you to see that. Um, it's kind of it sucks when you start because um, from here on out the problems get more complicated and it sucks in that sense because even if you want to verify your answers the way I've been doing it um, sometimes they won't make sense but just wanted to point that out these answers are still correct they might seem off when you do the sum of the forces right but that's just rounding that's what sucks so let's go ahead and do the last step uh, the forces in each element so local element forces step five first element between nodes one and two so F1x, F2x is equal to EAL. In this case, EAL is the same for both beams because the length is the same, E is the same, and A is the same. If this would have been uh, four meters and this one two, then this EAL would have been divided by four, not two. Okay, just uh, throwing it out there. Don't assume that this will always be the case negative one one and then u1 and u2 right it's between nodes one and two so u1 was zero u2 was 0 0.0124 and again add the other four if it makes you more comfortable but we're gonna go ahead and continue like this f1x of element one it's 420 times 10 to the five right that's going to be 1 times 0, negative 1. So I'm going to do this. 0 minus 0 0.0124. If you do that math, F1x element 1 is negative 520, 800 newtons going to the uh, right. So that's F1x of element 1. F2x. It's the same equation, right? 420 times 10 to the fifth is EAL. Now it's negative one times zero plus 0 0.0124. So this is positive, the only thing that changes um, is the sign. 520, 800 newtons to the right. And this is of element one, okay? Um, and we'll verify these answers, just FYI. Second element between nodes two and three. So it's gonna be F2x, F3x. That's gonna equal again, EAL. Because it's all equal, we use the same number, 420 times 10 to the fifth. One, negative one, negative one, one. And then the vector is U2, U3, right? U2, U3, that is 0 0.0124, 0 0.025. All right, so let's go ahead. F2x of element 2 is equal to 420 times 10 to the fifth, right? 1 times this, that is 0 0.0124, plus negative 1 times 0 0.025, that's negative 0 0.025. Do the math, you will get F2x of element two is negative five, two, nine, 
200. Newton's going to the right. And F3X, same thing, just a sign switch to right. So it's 529, 200. Newton's going to the right. Now let's verify them. Um, to verify these, all you have to do is add the the local forces at each node and when you add that number you're supposed to um, obtain the same number you receive for the big forces so let me show you what i mean f1x the number is negative 52800 to the right okay so that means when you add all the little f1s in the element forces you're supposed to get negative 52800 so we have one right here that's negative 52800 not here, not here, not here. So boom, this one checks out. F2x was negative 5,000, remember? So that means when you add all the F2x's here, you're supposed to get negative 5,000. So you have 520, 800, and five, negative 529. You're gonna get negative 9,000, but, but again, that's because of uh, rounding errors. If you would've used the right numbers, this number right here would've been 522, and this one would have been negative 527. That would have given you the negative 5,000. So boom, this one's also verified, F2. Now the third one, positive F529. Uh, boom, that's the only one, F3X, positive 529. And nothing here, so that means it's verified. So again, the biggest thing in this video was uh, the rounding. You gotta be real careful moving forward. Um, I guess in the problems before this chapter and all that good stuff, uh, it wasn't really a problem, but now that we're dealing with super small numbers, right, and super big numbers, um, it's gonna kind of mess with you. But as long as you know what you're doing, right, um, if you're following the processes, you'll be all right. But to play it safe in the exam, you could always just use exact numbers. But yep, there you go.